In today's class, we're going to take a look at how you solve a trig equation, a trigonometric equation, in degrees and using a calculator. So once you get beyond the most basic level of trigonometry, which would be things like seeing Sokotoa, like the trig ratios and sine and cosine for the first time, you start to realize that trigonometry kind of splits into calculator, non-calculator, in other words, having to do it manually, radians and degrees. Radians are just another way of measuring angles. If you're not familiar with radians, that's cool. This class is going to be in degrees, but just be aware that anytime you're doing trigonometry, you've always got to remember and check which of these kind of four options that you're dealing with. They are not wildly different, but they certainly do differ, especially the manual versus calculator version of doing some of these trig equations that we're going to look at. So we're working in degrees and we're working in calculator mode. So that's probably the easiest scenario uh, to deal with. I'm also making an assumption in this class that you've seen, yeah, you've seen a bit of trigonometry already, that you've seen, for example, the cast diagram. Um, if not, it's not a showstopper. We can still kind of work through it, but it might be that you'll get to some parts here and think, like, what? I'm not sure what's going on there. Just stop at that point and maybe check out another class on that topic or just muddle your way through and then hopefully this will explain it anyway. So we've got these um, three trig equations to solve. We're gonna do them, um, yeah, calculator, and we're gonna do them in degrees. Let's define this first one as x ranging from zero to 360. So remember, anytime you get a trig equation, it should come with a corresponding range of values. And that's just because the trig function, so maybe thinking about those in terms of the graphs, like the sine graph, they carry on for forever. So you can't, um, if you don't restrict your range, then you can't stop how many solutions you get. The solutions would carry on indefinitely. So every trig equation comes with a corresponding range of um, values. I think maybe for the second one, we'll restrict it to 180 degrees. And the third one, let's just run that out to 360 degrees again. So these ranges of values could be anything. Sometimes they even go beyond 360, up to like 720 or 540. Just depends, but this is probably your standard range because that's one cycle of the sine graph and the cosine graph. The tan graph's a little different. Okay, so we start this one here by basically uh, rearranging the algebra. So I'm just gonna take the minus one to the other side and then divide by three. That's always going to be your first move with a trig equation. So that would end up being one over three. That's our first move in the sense that we want to get to the point where we've got the trig function on its own and then the number usually or quite often a fraction on the other side of the equation. And we're going to do that with all of these. This is like our standard kind of first move. At this point, you really need to fire up a um, cast diagram. So again, if you're not sure what a cast diagram is, just maybe um, follow along as best you can or try and um, find another class on that topic. So cast diagram just tells us where to expect our solutions to the equation. So they're really, really important. I cannot emphasize enough how important these are in trig equations. So we look to our function and we see that it's equal to a positive value. The function is sine. That means that we check here and here in the cast diagram. I'm not gonna go into that too much in this class. So like I say, if, that's not, if you're not sure about that, then check that out somewhere elsewhere. So at this point, because we're working this question calculator, we need to do the inverse sine of one third. That's just how these always kind of go. And that's just taking that off of this line here. So that, that would be a calculator thing. I, I did this earlier, so I know the answer comes out to be 19.5, but I've not just figured that out in my head. This is a calculator process. 19.5 is between 0 and 90, so that solution there is basically the one in this first uh, quadrant. To get the one in the second quadrant, we do 180 minus, because we're going backwards, so it'll be 180 minus 19.5. So there's a lot of use of the first solution to get successive solutions in these questions, so that would come out to be point. Um, five degrees. Remember that for trig equations, you're always getting solutions in degrees. So just be sure to put your degrees um, on the end there. So because that is in the correct quadrant and that's in the correct quadrant, we could now basically go ahead and assign these to x. 
You've got to be careful with assigning your answers to x too early in these questions because sometimes these are only going to be working numbers like reference answers and you need to do a little bit more work in, but we're good to go, I think, with uh, that one. Okay, right, so moving on. So we'll do the same thing again. We'll start by rearranging to cos x, take the minus 2 over, divide by 5, that would be 2 over 5. And again, just firing up a quick cast diagram. So you've just got to get in the habit of doing this every time. You can start to do it quite quickly, and you might even drop some of the labels. Cosine equals positive value, so we're checking the cosine and the all quadrant. So we expect solutions between 0 and 90 degrees and between um, oh, 270, make that a little neater, 270 and uh, 360 degrees. So that gives us an expectation of what the answers should come out to be. So again, we're doing this calculator, there's no way to do this really manually. So we would have to just use the inverse, so it's cos inverse of 2 over 5. I've got no idea what that is, but my cheat sheet is going to tell me, and it's apparently 66.4 degrees. Okay, so that is in the first quadrant where we expected a solution, so that will be one of our x values. We checked in the fourth quadrant, 270 to 360, so we get that solution by doing 360 minus 66.4, and uh, that comes out to be check that one, 293.6, <laughs> 293.6, I was a bit lazy not doing mental math there, but this one anyway is irrelevant because our range of values only ran to 180, here we were allowed a full cycle of the cast diagram, so solutions from any quadrants, here we're only allowed to go to 180, so that effectively means that you're only looking at the top kind of half the first two quadrants on your cast diagram. So that means that although this would be a valid solution to the equation, it's not valid for that range of values. So we're going to discard that one in, in this case. So that's just for illustration about why the cast diagram is important in conjunction with this. So if you check this in conjunction with this, then you would sometimes only need to put on one check mark. Okay, so moving on, trying the third one. So rearranging this guy, we're going to get tan x equals minus 7 over 2. When you've got a negative, it's a slightly more complicated process, not much more, but the way you work with the cast diagram is a little different, but you still need the cast diagram. So firing this guy up, and here we've got tan equal to a negative value. If it's a positive value, you check here and here for tan. If it's negative, it must be the other two. So we're checking in these two quadrants this time. So it's just a slight variation in the technique when it's a negative. Just check in the other two quadrants, basically. The other change in the technique is that when we take the inverse, we drop the negative. You don't always have to do that, but it's a better approach, I think, and based on experience of teaching this, it's better in the long run to just drop the negative. There are times when you'll get away with not dropping the negative, but in the standard practice would be to drop the negative every time. So that's going to give you some um, answer, which I will check again on my cheat sheet, which comes out to be um, 74, 74 degrees. Okay, so notice that 74 is in the range 0 to 90, and that's in that first quadrant where we don't have a check. That's one of the other differences when it's a negative. You get this first answer, which is always between 0 and 90, because when you do the inverse on the calculator with a positive, the value is always between 0 and 90. So this is not an answer, it's a reference number. So that means that our answers are going to be here and here, which we get by doing, in this case, 180 minus. So we're going to get x equals 180 minus 74, which is 106 degrees. And then the second one, the one in the last quadrant, remember that's 360 there, we're going to get from 360 uh, minus 74, which is um, 286 degrees. Okay, so um, one other thing that I should just quickly mention about the cast diagram is notice that we've made our, what are called adjustments from either 180 or 360, same over here, same down here. Some people want to use 
90 and 270 and I mean you would think if you're not used to these why not use 90 and 270 you can use them but the process is a lot more elaborate there's more chance of making a mistake so try to make your adjustments off of the horizontal line like the 180 and the 360 rather than the, the vertical line. So that's basically how you go about solving trig equations in degrees with a calculator. The technique starts to vary as you do these questions in radians and if you do them manually that's probably the biggest change to this technique but the overall premise is basically the same. You're using a combination of algebra, the either the well the cast diagram for sure, the only difference might be instead of using the inverse and just pushing that into a calculator you're going to use some manual process to get the, the final answers. So if that's um, new to you, then maybe just make sure you've understood everything there and possibly try a few practice questions. If you've seen that before, try a few practice questions just to make sure that you've got that technique down. It's quite an important one. Trig comes up in a lot of courses, comes up in calculus a lot, all over the place really. So good technique to, to be really sharp with.